This week, I'm using a different map in the opening titles. Not because it looks better, but because the earth is clearly flat. It was a joke, Mark. I was joking. The indigenous Saroi people, who also live on the edge of neighbouring Algeria, want the Western Sahara to go independent, back the Polisario Front to do this. This is a tumultuous move though, for many ethnic, strategic and historical reasons. But why do Morocco care so much? Let's find out. So, the Western Sahara is in Africa. But not that Africa. This Africa. It's time to delve into the conspiracy theory. Oh, um, I mean history. Because unlike some channels, we look at real history. In ancient times, the trading and sailing Venetians were believed to be around the area, followed swiftly by the Carthaginian Empire in 576 BC. Moving on to around 700 AD, before Islam came to the region, Nomadic Berbers of the Senhaja and Zenaga tribal confederations settled in the area. Moving on again to 1147 AD, the Almohad Caliphate of what would become Moroccan Empire takes the Western Sahara and the wider Maghreb region, keeping most of it until the Europeans came and passed it through four more dynasties. In the 13th century, the people of the Malik tribes which have Yemeni descent, came all the way from the Arabian Peninsula and settled into the area under Berber control, as it slowly became what we now know as the Moroccan Empire. In the 15th and 16th centuries, the area was under threat, approached by the Songhai Empire, who fell at the hands of the Moroccans. It's important to note here that due to Africa's amazing diverse, beautiful, but often crazy geography with mountains and jungles and deserts within stone throws of each other. The normal conception of nation states with fixed territories struggled to evolve. Many anthropologists and historians believe the diverse landscape is why agriculture and urbanization didn't really kick off in Africa like it did in Europe and Asia, despite having the advantage of being where the first humans evolved and lived. This is why so many African tribes were nomadic, and African empires that expanded beyond city-state status would often have complicated multinational systems of governance and some extraterritorialities. While the area has been mostly Moroccan, they never felt truly sovereign over the area, which they called Blad Esiba, which, if my Berber is as good as it used to be, means region of anarchy. As a result, the Songhai and Malian empires down south had some influence, but it was mainly tribal, predominantly Berber and some Tuareg tribal influences. And that brings us to modern history, when the Europeans came. In 1884, at the Berlin Conference, all of Europe's greatest line drawers sat down together and drew many wonderful straight lines. This event, amongst straight line sceptics, is known as the Scramble for Africa, and was a huge sweep of organised and brutal colonisation across the continent. Spain ended up guessing the Western Sahara. After World War II though, the continent was starting to be decolonised, which meant self-determination for Africans. Although the boundaries of the self had already been determined by the Europeans. Spain were a bit late to the party though, so the UN had to pressure them a bit to decolonise by 1966. Only a bit though, they didn't want to give off the impression they were making a decision. The UN wanted a referendum to take place, 
and make someone else decide because they're so decisive and helpful. Morocco could see straight through the UN's cunning plan though and requested any referendum be delayed until the ICJ had made a ruling on the claims. At this point, all four of Mauritania, Morocco, Spain and the Polisario Front. It's 1975 and it turns out the UN's plan didn't work. So Morocco decided to sort it out themselves and annexed the region after entering with the Green March, a peaceful protest that marched into the area saying it was a Moroccan land followed by no doubt even more peaceful armed soldiers and artillery. This led to a war with the Polisario Front that lasted until a ceasefire in 1991. Spain couldn't be bothered with a war though and agreed the Madrid Accords with Mauritania and Morocco. So by 1976 they'd formally deserve a desert. Straight after this, in 1976, the Polisario Front declared the Western Sahara as a Sawari Arabic Democratic Republic and they then made peace with Mauritania in 1979 and hand over their claims to the Polisario Front. Back to Morocco in 1979. Four years after Morocco's intervention, the UN decided they couldn't entirely be sure if they were an absolutely overt ban in the literal sense to varying degrees of Morocco's shenanigans and now recognise the Polisario Front as the representatives of the Sawari people under Moroccan occupation. This is sort of the same deal as Palestine under Israel, but not quite the same. All about consistency. In 1981, Morocco started building a wall along the border of their bit of the Western Sahara and turned them into the southern provinces. The other side, the Polisario bit, is called the Free Zone and in the eyes of the Moroccan government is untamed desert and basically anarchy once again. The Polisario Front then joined the African Union in 1982, another useful talking shop trying to integrate vastly different countries. Morocco then leave and protest, so it looks like there will be no more pointless meetings for them. The Polisario Front President, Mohamed Abdullah becomes Vice President of the African Union. 2002, the President, Mohamed Abdullah becomes Vice President of the African Union. Again. It almost seems like these supranational unions are running on broken records. 1992 saw the Settlement Plan and 1997 saw the Houston Plan come and go, trying to organise referendums but failing as an exciting international declaration was made. Just kidding, it was the even more exciting matter of voter eligibility and registration that was surprisingly contentious. In 2001 and 2003, two iterations of the Baker Plan came, which saw that before a referendum could take place, a five-year transitional regime where the Sawari Arabic Democratic Republic could be an autonomous region of Morocco. And that leaves us in 2020. The Polisario representative in the UN stresses an envoy to the Western Sahara is necessary, which is a huge step towards international recognition. To this day, the ceasefire of 1996 still lasts. Morocco still have about 80% of the land that is protected by a wall, and the Polisario Front government is exiled to Algeria. The dispute though is still unresolved and incredibly hot. That's all for the time being. Go down below to subscribe to the channel, like this video and click the notification bell and go check the description below to see our Patreon, our TikTok and our Instagram. See you soon.